Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove and in this video I'm going to take a look at binoculars and how they can enrich the experience of stargazing and watching aircraft. I'll briefly describe what all the specifications mean so that you can more accurately choose a pair of binoculars that you'll enjoy using to watch the skies, whether that's during the day at an airport or airshow or at night. When it comes to stargazing and exploring the cosmos through a lens, most people would probably call to mind the image of an astronomer's telescope. These have their obvious benefits, but binoculars offer an affordable alternative that are not only cheaper, but have the added benefit of being easily transportable and useful for daytime use in all kinds of circumstances. The same binoculars you use for watching the International Space Station passing overhead or for zooming in on nighttime flights can of course be used during the day at your local airfield or airport. Some astronomers use binoculars in conjunction with their telescopes. They scan the night sky with the binoculars to find an object, then use the telescope to examine it in more detail. These same binoculars might also be used at sporting events, concerts or bird watching, but they need to be lightweight so that they are not too cumbersome to use when swapping between telescope and binoculars. So here's a quick binoculars buyer's guide. It's worth paying a little more for your binoculars because of the differences between the cheaper models that deliver views with blurry edges and the clearer, more accurate binoculars that minimize this image distortion. The better binoculars for astronomy are those with lenses created with extra low dispersion glass. This type of glass is used in all kinds of optical instruments due to its ability to produce clearer images. Prism types. As well as the glass, there is the prism type to consider. The consensus among stargazers is to choose binoculars containing a porous prism type as this kind of prism delivers more light from fainter celestial objects. For all other daylight use, the roofer type prism is the norm as it is smaller and therefore allows for smaller and lighter binoculars. So you'll have to make a choice based on your intended activity. Will it be mostly during the day watching aircraft, birds or sports? Or will it be mostly at night seeking out celestial objects? Build quality. Another factor to think about is the build quality of the binoculars. They are likely to be exposed to cold, moist air during the winter months. There is also a risk that they may be dropped or knocked during fieldwork. And we must also consider that since they are handheld devices pressed against the eyes, the look and feel of the materials used is a factor. Magnification. Magnification is another variable, but generally speaking, the greater the magnification, the heavier the binoculars, so you'll need to find a happy medium. Heavy binoculars can soon feel like a burden for tired arms, but people vary, so the right pair for you may be heavier or lighter than the pair suitable for anyone else. The higher the magnification, the more apparent is the shakiness you see when viewing objects. If your binoculars are too heavy for you and the magnification is on the high side, then your view will be spoiled by the shaking. You could mount them on a tripod to overcome this, or simply buy a lighter pair with lower magnification. Magnification is denoted by the first of the two numbers you'll see in all the product descriptions. Thus, 8x42 binoculars will magnify images to eight times what you can see with the naked eye. A magnification of up to 10 is most suitable for astronomy. Lens diameter. However, the second number denotes the diameter of the binoculars lenses, and this is actually more important than the magnification, at least for astronomy. Lenses collect light from objects, so the larger the lens, the more light they collect. The human eye's lens diameter is about six millimeters, so you can imagine how much more light a lens that is 42 millimeters in diameter can collect. Thus, 8x42 or 10x50 are suitable for low light conditions and sky watching. They are also useful for things like sailing, when you might be looking into the distance under cloudy skies, or at dawn and dusk. 
7 by 35 and 10 by 32 are best for daylight outdoor use, bird watching, camping, etc. And 8 by 25 and 10 by 25 tend to be the lightweight set for general use at track and sporting events. Field of view. Another point worth mentioning is the trade-off between magnification and field of view, that is, the total amount of sky you can see through the lenses. Higher magnification binoculars obviously help you to see more detail, but they show a smaller field of view. This means it's less easy to find objects in the night sky, because you're looking at less of it, and you won't see as many reference points that help locate an object. It's a bit like being too close to a location on Google Maps. You sometimes have to zoom out to see where it is in relation to more familiar landmarks. Exit Pupil The exit pupil is another measurement you'll see mentioned with regard to binocular specifications. This value is the result of dividing the lens diameter by the magnification, so a 7 by 35 pair will have an exit pupil measurement of 5 mm, 35 divided by 7. Ideally, this figure should be higher than 5 mm. In dim light, the human eye's pupil can widen to 7 mm, so if your binoculars can improve on that, so much the better. A 7x50 pair, for example, would give you a value of 7.14 mm. Relative brightness is a measurement related to exit pupil and is calculated by squaring the exit pupil value. For example, 7.14 by 7.14 equals 50.97. That is more than twice the relative brightness of a pair of binoculars with an exit pupil of 5 mm. 5 by 5 equals 25. Eye relief. Binocular eye relief is a measurement of the distance from the eyepieces to the eyes while the whole field of view is in view. The best option is a longer eye relief. Field of view is usually denoted in feet and as previously mentioned, this decreases with increased magnification. Most binoculars have a central focus wheel, but some may have what's called a diopter adjustment ring on one of the barrels. This is designed to help those who need to compensate for differences between their two eyes. Conclusion Before you buy your first or next pair of binoculars, think about how you're likely to use them. If you plan to have them fixed in one place, perhaps even on their own tripod, then you could opt for a heavier pair. If on the other hand you will use them for plane spotting, camping, sailing, or going to any sporting events, go for the lighter pair. Your neck and arms will thank you for it. Let me know your thoughts on this subject by posting a comment below. And if you found this short guide of any use to you, then please give the video a like and share it with others who may be interested.